So let me tell you about this candle that I have. This is a 228 Grand Street Candle Company. Uh, the smell is oak moss and amber. It is hand poured and has natural soy and it's based in Baltimore, Maryland. So I gotta tell you guys, this is the best smelling candle that I've ever smelled. And one thing that I've learned through this candle is that there are more candles in life than Yankee Candles. And you know, no hate to Yankee Candles, no hate to Bath & Beyond and all those candles, but guys, small businesses usually 99% of the time have better stuff than like all these bigger brands because they actually, I'm not saying that the other bigger brands don't care, but I just feel like they're just so more personal. They really try to like, you know, they're trying to rise up, so they gotta put up good stuff. And this small business, black owned company is absolutely brilliant and I 1 million percent recommend checking them out. I'll definitely put the description, like the link in the description box, but it fills up the entire room in like 5-10 minutes. It smells so warm and beautiful, perfect for a winter evening. The jar is also very beautiful, it's a nice burnt brown color and then the beautiful fire just really complements it beautifully. So if you really want to check them out, I got the 9 ounce um, jar because, you know, it is, it is a little pricey, but it's totally worth it. And I definitely will be buying from them again. And it's been burning for a pretty long time. Um, definitely worth your money. And that is my candle spiel. So the video is a different kind of video that I've ever, you know, embarked on. Uh, this is a speed draw of me. You know, you'll see what it is at the end. And I wanted to do this kind of video as opposed to a traditional candle side talk because I feel like the topic really fits in with what I'm doing. And, you know, before I begin officially, I'm gonna, you know, give you a little bit of background to, you know, this, this whole topic. So traditionally, January 1st is our New Year's. January 1st is when people make their New Year's resolutions. They really, you know, set off the... F they set off the year on, a, on the right foot, right? And I did not have a good couple weeks of January, since like January 1st. And so I gave my official New Year's on January 18th. And since then, I've been pretty happy. And, you know, just focusing on myself sounds cliche, but it's true. You know, being focusing on yourself is always a good thing. And one thing that I've realized in these past couple weeks with my, you know, new lifestyle, right? Um, is how much we need and want control in everything that we do because we need a sense of security and the only the only constant in life I like to say sounds cliche the only constant in life is change right everything is always gonna change and it's not always in our hands and that's just a really hard concept to grasp and we can only control as much as we want and the only thing that we can actually control is ourselves and ultimately the best thing that you can control is your mind. I'm not that good at that either. You know, we all have our doubts, we all have our pain and inner turmoils within our heads, just like Hamlet, haha. <laughs> and I think it's important to realize those wins and losses, but it's also good to realize what you can control as a person, uh, your own emotional state, your own actions, what you can and can't do. And one thing that has been forcing me to, you know, here's a topic of the video, to trust the process. That's the whole thing, right? We have to trust the process. We control what we can, but then the rest is not up to us. And, you know, in another sense, we can think of it as like, let your mind just go. Like, go off on something without really thinking about making it perfect. That's one thing I've also been trying to work on, which really fits in with this type of video, trusting the process. I did a little sketch, you can see, and then I just went straight with my pen. And that literally forces me to, one, finish the drawing. I've been trying to do these kinds of like doodles every day where I force myself to finish it, and it only takes like half an hour to an hour, and it's worth it in the end. And it also forces me to try but also accept the fact that it's not gonna look perfect. And um, looking at them right now, it does look pretty good. Like, I'm proud of it, you know? Um, 
I finished something. I think it's more satisfying to finish things, um, even if it's not perfect, because odds are you're being way too hard on yourself, and it is perfect, because that's the way that it's supposed to be intended. Every little- ow, I'm so sorry about that. Every little thing that you do has some kind of intention or purpose. Like, nothing that you do is not going to be useless. Unless if you scroll on TikTok for like four hours, guys, come on. Like, there are more things to life than scrolling on TikTok. But, <laughs> um, what was I saying? You know, finishing things. Because it's better to finish things than to not, even if it's bad. I know the one thing that I had to work on in those two weeks of pain in January, I didn't finish it well, but I finished it and I, even if it didn't work out to my favor in the end with all the effort I gave, um, it was better. I felt better just having not to think about it anymore. I'm not saying don't do that with everything, at least try sometimes, you know, you gotta, there's a healthy balance to these kinds of things, right? And drawing, in this more specific sense, is like a nice therapeutic way to make me finish what I'm doing and help me realize that it doesn't have to be perfect um, because it's going to be beautiful either way. And you just have to trust, that also leads to the next point, trusting yourself. And you know, 99% of the time when I am doing these kinds of drawings, I hate it. Like, I just want to give up, I don't want to do it, this is awful. and by the end I was like you'll see I mean it turns out pretty nice in the end but by the end I was like okay I shouldn't have given myself so much crap I should have trusted myself more I should have given myself more credit because it turned out pretty pretty decent and I think we can all learn something about that too we need to give ourselves more credit because you know, it's not easy living. Like, that sounds so simple, but it's- living is hard, right? Doing things is hard. It's so easy to not. And I think but any kind of effort given into something that you're creating, whether it be cooking, painting, you know, writing an essay, anything that requires thought and energy and effort is worth- is worth it. You're worth it. Anything you do is worth it. Anything you do is worth- is- beautiful, it's deserving, it's everything, it's, 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 you have to trust yourself, that's just all I'm trying to say, and, because in the end, like I said, it always works out, and if it doesn't work out, you know, try again, so it's hard, it's harder than it sounds, trying again when you know that you've already failed the first time, um, or quote-unquote failed because, you know, odds are you didn't fail, it just didn't fit your own standards. Um, I know I did a painting a couple days ago, and I really didn't want to do it. I don't know why I did it, but I finished it, and it was a still life, so it's like, you have to focus on the light and the thing that's the light and the objects and the shadows and everything, but, you know, by the end, it didn't come out the way that I wanted it to, but I did learn a lot of things. I learned that, um, I need to do in the summertime rather than the wintertime because I can't paint that fast and the sun goes down really quickly. So, you know, you live in and you learn, right? That's what life is. You're living and you're learning. And one thing to say from trusting yourself is knowing that, you know, you know yourself best. We often look to others to find our own sense of validation and self-worth and then we gain others' approvals when we're doing something that's artistic or, you know, anything along those lines. And, guys, you know, stop. You know yourself best. You know what you want to do. Don't doubt yourself. And I do, you know, I still doubt myself a lot of the time, but me not having a lot of friends has forced me to, you know, not doubt myself. <laughs> that sounds really redundant, but it's just... The more that you're more comfortable with yourself, the more you're comfortable with the fact that you're not perfect and the fact that whatever you do is worth it, even if it's quote-unquote bad, um, it's worth it. And it's like we see so much online where we think people have control when really, you know, they don't. And we don't see that, of course. And that's the whole thing with social media. We don't see what, what's really going on behind the pictures. And just knowing that everything happens for a reason and we control what we can, like I said before, and we have to trust everything that's beyond our control is going to happen for a reason, which is an awful thing to do. Like I've 
had a pretty bad patch, you know, um, for a certain amount of time that I don't really talk about with people. But in the end, uh, I realized that, you know, maybe this is for a bigger purpose and I focus on things that I can control. Because I can't control that one thing, but I can control how much I'm journaling every day, how much I'm playing Animal Crossing, how much I play Minecraft, you know, those are the things I enjoy. So if I fill things in my life that make me happy, and add value to my life, then, you know, who cares about what's happening outside of my control? It's none of my business. It's none of my, it's not, it's not worth my time. You know, figuring out what your priorities are and figuring out what you, what's worth your time also helps a lot. And with that, I have a couple minutes left, so I kind of have to finish up. But I think my last thought I just wanted to say is, it's almost comforting, in my opinion, um, the unknown. Like, the unknown to me is comforting because there's an infinite amount of things that we can know and we don't know what infinite is. Like, we can't grasp that in our minds, but we can grasp um, the unknown. Like, we just don't know. Like, describe something or describe nothing. You can't because there's always something, right? And I think being oblivious in my eyes or being kind of innocent or naive is almost comforting in a sense not like naive to the news or what's happening in the world but just like naive of things you can't control in your own current life because then it makes you focus on things you can control so in a sense think of the unknown or the lack of control that you have in life as a blanket to make you focus on things that you can control and you know focus on yourself because the ultimate thing that you can control is yourself and with that that is that is how that's my talk that's my thing about trusting the process i hope you enjoyed um this video and this kind of like speed draw this it was i, I had fun doing it i was listening to a cold play album when i was doing it and you know maybe one day i'll show you all my drawings maybe not kind of keeping it to myself not that good they're ugly it's just i want to keep it to myself but i really love flowers if you couldn't tell so that's why i did this and i'm just trying to wait trying to talk this out until i finish it and i'm almost done if you saw jump cuts it's because i was drawing and then i had to go do something with my parents and i come back so that's why i did jump cuts it wasn't like those minecraft videos where I was like, alright guys, see you tomorrow, and then I come back with a full kingdom, that kind of thing. So, with that, thank you for watching this Candleside Talk 3 and I will see you in the next one.